Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, your look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Three city projects have been named as finalists in the annual Kansas City Economic Development Council's Cornerstone Award competition. The Beacon Hill Neighborhood Project has used the city's investment in infrastructure to then leverage development of new homes, multifamily housing, and UMKC's new student housing. Also, Swope Soccer Village is a $15 million project that renovated an underutilized section of the park into nine full-size soccer fields, and it has now become one of the country's premier urban soccer facilities. The KCPD headquarters project renovated a 70-year-old building to make that building efficient and current with modern police operations. The Cornerstone Awards recognize companies and organizations that contribute to the growth of Kansas City's economy. The finalists will be honored at the Cornerstone reception in May and the winners will be announced at that event. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with the Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation Department. This winter, we are keeping very busy with activities and fun for all. Are you looking to do something different this Valentine's Day? Participate in an old European tradition that's made its way to Kansas City by locking your love to the old Red Bridge in Minor Park. Couples attach a padlock bearing their names to the bridge and proclaim their unbreakable and everlasting love. Visit the old Red Bridge on Red Bridge Road east of Holmes in South Kansas City on Valentine's Day or any time to declare your love. You can also visit lock-its.com to purchase a custom engraved lock with a portion of proceeds supporting KC Parks. Learn more by visiting kcparks.org and searching Love Locks. Let the beautiful roses in the Loose Park Rose Garden inspire your child or student to write an original Valentine poem. All children in the greater KC area in grades 3 through 8 can submit a poem that includes the word rose at least once. Winners will be chosen in three categories based on grade level. Deadline is February 14th. For details, visit kcparks.org. Kansas City's Boulevard and Parkway system is one of the jewels of our city. The Parks and Recreation Board of Commissioners is adopting standards which will impact what can be developed and maintained on these park properties. The public is invited to weigh in on these changes by attending any of three scheduled open houses, all of which begin at 6 p.m. Tuesday, January 27th at Main Corps, Wednesday, January 28th at Northland Neighborhoods, Inc., or Tuesday, February 3rd at KCPD South Patrol. Please contact Denise Phillips at 816-513-7556 with any questions. KC Parks values your opinion and invites you to take a short survey to help us improve our services and program offerings. Visit kcparks.org to complete the three to five minute survey. Submit the survey by February 16th and you will be entered in a drawing for a KC Parks prize package. To learn more about these or other events Kansas City, Missouri Parks and Recreation has to offer, visit kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. The new $28 million renovation of the Kansas City Police Department headquarters is nearly complete. It includes the addition of a tower on the north side of the building and a spacious community room. The renovation of headquarters now provides enough space for administrative and investigative employees and, more importantly, the new headquarters is now compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act. I think the way it's been rearranged uh, and, and more space, the interrogation part, uh, so that this, this is a community room where we didn't have that, that the outlying stations have, but this is, this is first class, this is 21st century. And I think that the, that the employees that work out of this building, both uh, civilian as well as in uniform, can be proud. And the citizens who come in can be proud. 
Not far away, more development is taking place with the construction of the new East Patrol Division Station and Crime Lab Campus. That's being built on seven acres of land at 27th and Prospect. Over 40 uh, minority-owned uh, business and women uh, businesses uh, and persons have been working on that site and over $17 million of funds have gone to reflecting that diversity in which we talked about. Uh, and this has been an, an example, a stellar example uh, for uh, how projects can be built. But not only that, but people across the country are looking at it from the Section 3 angle and so much more. And so it excites me travel through there now, it, again, it's just a different outlook over in the area, just a different just a different look for the entire area, not just the area where they're building the station, but you don't have even the people now that were laudering out in that area, that you don't have the same people out there even for that. Again, when you change something, you show people that you care, and you show people that things are not being built in other areas, and, and now we're uh, spending some resources in that area, shows that we're making progress in Kansas City. The East Patrol Campus will provide state-of-the-art facilities for police officers and give the department more tools to investigate crime. The campus stretches from Prospect Avenue on the east to Brooklyn Avenue on the west and from 26th Street to 27th Street. Kansas City's Architecture Division in the General Services Department is managing this project in collaboration with the KCPD Capital Improvements Unit. Construction on the $74 million facility is scheduled for completion by 2016. The East Campus is being built with the Public Sales Safety Tax approved by Kansas City voters in 2002 and renewed in 2010. These projects are unique because they are uh, providing state-of-the-art facilities for uh, law enforcement that has long since needed it. The thing I'm most excited about with the East Patrol Station is the fact that it is there with the crime lab on a major campus, and it's a community in which trust needs to be built. And in this day and age where there is a lot of distrust between law enforcement and communities, it's a great opportunity to rebuild some of that trust. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Ball Edson. I'm with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. Today we're at the J.C. Nichols Fountain in the plaza area. We recently removed all of the sculptures from the fountain and took them to storage for the winter. We're going to be launching a major restoration project here uh, to repair some of the bases and the concrete work in the fountain. And the sculptures are going to be cleaned and have their patina and their, their finishes refinished and, and get some repairs made while they're in storage over the winter. And then they will be returned and put back in the fountain in the spring. The bases under the sculptures are concrete and they will be getting completely replaced. Uh, they had just worn out over time. The fountain has been in place since 1960 and those concrete bases have gotten a lot of uh, wear and tear from the freezing and thawing and water and pounding on them. So they are going to be completely removed and replaced and the sculptures will get all new concrete bases. One of the other things that we are going to do in this renovation is take the opportunity to restore the fourth dolphin, which was missing when the sculptures were originally brought to Kansas City, and a replacement piece was put in the fountain. And so we have recently been able to acquire the original fourth dolphin, and we're going to be able to put that back into the fountain with this restoration. And the piece that has been in the fountain for the last 50-something years will be placed on a pedestal nearby so that it'll still be related to the fountain where it has been sitting all of its life. Uh, some of the coping stones around the side of the fountain also are concrete and they've been uh, worn over the years. They've got some damage and some broken elements and parts that have fallen off so we're going to be replacing some of those and, and patching and refinishing the rest of them. And we hope to have the entire fountain completely renovated in time for Fountain Day which is April 14th. 2015. Please join us. For more information, visit our website at kcparks.org. Ronald Daigle with the Finance Department's Business License Office was recognized for his outstanding work with the city by winning the Rich Knoll Paysetter Award for January. I'd just like to thank the mayor, the council, 
and the finance department for honoring me this way. Um, I've worked for the city for a year or two, as uh, somebody has mentioned, <laughs> and um, it's been a good job, and I enjoy coming to work each day, and I want to thank the people in the finance department for uh, putting up with me all these years. I've just tried to, uh, as they say, follow the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and so this is the way I try to treat my colleagues and the public. So thanks again, and God bless. The Paysetter program recognizes city employees who are skilled in communications, customer service, teamwork, and leadership. The award is named in honor of former assistant city manager Rich Knoll, who served the city for more than 26 years. In observance of the upcoming President's Day holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Monday, February 16th. Also, curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day throughout that week. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.